Welcome to Mega New Gaming. This review is going to be on the game Shardlight. Shardlight is a point and click graphic adventure. It was created in Adventure Game Studio. It's a point and click inventory based style first per uh, single player adventure game. It is developed by two people, Francisco Gonzalez and Ben Chandler. It also involved Nathaniel Chambers, who composed the music. Ben Chandler was artist. The writer was Francisco Gonzalez. And Wajidai Games was the publisher. It on Microsoft Windows and iOS. And was released on March 8th of 2016 for PC. And on iOS it was March 8th, 2017. And up front, I haven't played this game on iOS, but it really seems like a game that would make quite a good mobile game. And I tend to not do much mobile gaming. But if if I had my own tablet, this would be a game I'd be I'd be willing to spend a few dollars on. But on with the plot. You play as the protagonist, Amy Wellard. You suffer from a disease called green, lo green Lung. And you're in a world that takes place about 20 years after World War III, where atomic, drum atomic bombs were dropped. The world is left devastated, the sky is turned brown. In the meantime, there's little shards of uranium glass everywhere that emit a glow glowing green light. Which is used as an artificial light source. Anyway, there's a, va a temporary vaccine that cures green lung on a temporary basis that only the rich people can afford. And there's a lottery where poor people work with and in return to get a payment for a lottery with the possibility of getting the vaccine. And the city this takes place in, the society has been taken over by a group of... Hi, Amy. I don't want to call them right-wing, because that doesn't really capture them. It's nice to be home. Adequately. I just wish They're I could forget about everything and stay in for the sure. rest of the day. But some sort of... You're definitely a They're mostly broken, but I can't bring myself to throw them out. Of people that, if they You're weren't aristocrats me, prior to the war, they had moved into that social, the upper class. Not sleepy after right the now. War. Very much an or oligarchical society. He was always Controls so happy everything. when we were fixing things It's together. in line with what you would have seen. Not the most flattering at the angle, but worst of the communist. Anyway. Soviet Union, nice to see not much Nazi has Germany, these two. and similar countries. Albeit, the way it's expressed in the game, it's not quite to that extreme. It's more of a cross between. The leadership seems to be more this of a cross between. This was taken shortly after they were married. They look if, so If Nazi happy. Germany was localized to a city, and Hitler was running a, a no, street gang. No, these tools are for restoration work power. Only. I'm not risking damaging them out there. But they do have control over all the resources. That's fine where it is. And there's no clear, at least open challenge. It's not in working authority. condition. The motherboard fried a long time ago, and I haven't been able to find a new one anymore. Anyway, you come into the game. It's not. You're working on a lottery job. To it's not finished. In order to receive a lottery ticket for a chance to win this vaccine, it's you empty. run into somebody. I that person points you in the direction of somebody else. Who points you in the direction of somebody else, and so on. Well, I like looking at my and childhood knickknacks. None of them will do me any good out there. As far as actual gameplay, I've hit a dead end on this thing. It's streamlined Until I the graphical find the right parts, adventure there's not much down more to I the can bare do. bones of what's necessary for a graphical adventure to function properly. So it ends up being. A bit simplistic, but not as tedious. 
Here is adequate to cool tools and clues to solve the puzzles. And the story, albeit rather brief, is engaging, as is the dialogue. I really did feel a connection to the various characters in the game, even if they were some of them were somewhat built on stereotypes. Like you have a religious cult that worships death. And uh, they're a bit more there's a bit more depth to them than that, but yeah. So anyway, you have a oh yeah, an interesting thing about the people that are in charge is they're dressed like the they're dressed like the the British during the American Revolution in a way, you know, upper class society at that time. Or with the false wigs and whatnot. So anyway. That's I don't wanna discuss the story in any more detail as to avoid spoilers. And this is very much a a narrative driven game. And to provide any more details would spoil it. This is a very short game. It does take the graphical adventure into a post apocalyptic world. So it's it's sorta of like somebody just decided to do a brief synopsis of Fallout and turn it into a graphical adventure with some new characters. And as such, it, d it is an interesting story. The graphical style, the music, the sound, the voice acting are all done very well. The main thing holding this game back is just the length. The length and the... Yeah, that's the, the main... Yeah, that is the main issue. It's just the total length isn't very long. It shouldn't... Somebody shouldn't spend more than six hours on this game total. That's if you're really going through and trying to find every little thing in the game. As far as scores from other people, Metacritic has a 75 out of 100. Adventure Gamers gave it a 4 out of 5. GameSpot gave it 6 out of 10. And PC Gamer gave it a 66 out of 100. What I've noticed is when PC Gamer gives something 66 out of 100, either it ends up actually being good, and they just don't like certain aspects of it because they're not modern enough, or depending on the who, who wrote the article, or the game ends up being absolutely atrocious. On, in a in a scoring system where 66% really meant 16% above the mean, I would say that's about where this game stands. It's everything it does, it does anywhere from above average to really well. And I love the retro graphical style and the fact that they they put together something like this using Adventure Game Studio really took a lot of talent between the three people involved. But the, the length is what kills this one. The length, and there's not a whole lot of complexity to it. I, I did like the, one of the early puzzles is calligraphy puzzle where you're told to just study up on your calligraphy. There's a chalkboard with some symbols on it. And in the town, if you talk to everybody, you notice somebody that has books. If you think, oh, I need to study, oh, I should go to the guy with the books, you'll see, oh, calligraphy books and ads that you read the book, you'll see different symbols. If you look at the letter, there's a symbol on there. And you think, what if I etch that symbol on the chalkboard? And that's one of the, about as advanced as the puzzles get. It's fair. And then it tells you how many times to 
knock and ring the doorbell. A creative little addition there is instead of actually drawing the symbol on the chalkboard, I just looked at the chart to see oh, all right, which letters need marked out. And I realized, oh wait, if I mark these out and these out, I could get knock and buzz, and there's some numbers there. So, all right, I'll just, I'll just knock five, buzz four. And I did that, then the guy next to me said, there's two things he, he's learned. The first thing is the thing he says before. The second thing is he doesn't like, and it says something about cheaters. Of cheating being wrong, never trust a cheater. Which is kind of a clever thing, because I'm assuming if somebody just walked up to the door without solving that puzzle, using calligraphy, drawing the symbol on the board, that they probably are just doing a walkthrough, and it prevents, it forces people to actually play the game to an extent instead of just using a walkthrough. At the same time, a lot of people play these games for the story. And just keep a walkthrough handy just to guide them through it. But it, it was clever nonetheless. But yeah, it's. This isn't the longest journey. Or one of the other classics of adventure game. Adventure gaming. And really, it's. It's not even up to Lamplight City's voice acting and character development and it's about ha half the length of Lamplight City on top of that not the length is a deal breaker but it definitely hurts the game a bit so at the end of the day there is, this is a good adventure game it's quick you can get over with quite quickly and you'll find yourself wanting more to the story than what is offered but what you get is definitely a, a good game while it lasts. So where do I put this on the list? I am going to put it... Let's see. It's going to go in the low part of the B's. I'm going to put it right above Need for Speed Most Wanted and right below E's Memories of Celsetta. If they came out with some expansion packs to this, included as a total package, I'll definitely go back review that. If you get, if you double the length of this game and further expand the world, or at least build upon what's already offered, I would definitely be willing to bump this up a, a bit on the list. But the length, the length and the lack of complexity definitely impairs the total score, giving it effect the overall experience. Hope you enjoyed the review. I am doing a playthrough of this on the channel, so you can check it out for yourself if you don't want to actually play the game. There is a sufficient story there that watching it, or even listening to it, there's enough there where that's at least somewhat entertaining. So if you enjoyed the review, please like, subscribe, and have a great day.